Now, I think people of all ages like going on the swings at the park. I know I'm one of them. But I wonder if you'd like to go on this swing. It's no ordinary swing. It's a swing of the aptly named Adrenaline Quarry in Cornwall. A beautiful place to sit and read quietly while everyone else has their fill of adrenaline. The following is taken from their website. The winch pulls you up slowly enough to realise that this is not a good idea. There are a few seconds of dreadful, lonely waiting, punctuated, if you are lucky, with insults from previously helpful staff. It doesn't matter who you go up with, you're on your own. Then the most horrible, sickening drop. You're momentarily weightless, then accelerating through double gravity as you level out at the bottom. You head up and out over the cliff edge, 160 feet above the lake. At this point, it just gets worse as you become weightless again and plunge backwards towards the cliff. As you can imagine, I didn't fancy going on this swing. It was quite enough for me to drive up to the top of the hill. But those who did would have had to obey certain rules because if they didn't, they could have got hurt. They would have had to listen to the instructions given and made sure they did as they were told. Otherwise, there would have been consequences. Back at the dawn of time, there was a beautiful place called Eden. There wouldn't have been anything to read and there was freedom to enjoy it. But there was a rule which needed to be obeyed. You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. The two people who lived there, Adam and Eve, or A and E, were onto a good thing, as long as they obeyed the rules. But if they didn't, there would be consequences. Now, having been to Cornwall on holiday, you would expect a couple of stories from that part of the world. So eager not to disappoint, here's another one. The Lost Gardens of Heligan near Mevagissi. If you want something a bit more sedate, then this is for you. These gardens must have been quite something before the First World War. They required the services of 22 gardeners to maintain them. But that war sadly led to the deaths of 16 of those gardeners. And by 1916, the garden was being looked after by only eight men. The house was tenanted for most of the 20th century, used by the US Army during the Second World War, and then converted into flats and sold without the gardens in the 1970s. Against this background, the gardens fell into a serious state of neglect and were lost to sight. My wife's probably wondering why I'm talking about this place because I've never set foot in it. I've never actually been. I can't tell you a story from a visit there as I've never been there. So why have I brought this in at this point? Today, our speaker is going to guide us through the lost garden of Eden from Genesis chapter three. I don't want to take anything from that chapter as he'll be doing that shortly. But I just wanted to set the scene by bringing out how amazing this garden must have been before that innocence was lost forever. Rules very clearly laid out were not followed and the fall would have been awful. Both of the original gardeners would have left the garden and never returned as a result of bad decisions, which would have had devastating consequences for all that would have followed, starting with their own children. We're still living with the fallout of paradise lost to this day. So what can we take from this? God has given us so much, the blessings of his creation, including one after another. Let's not lose heart by going after what's not good for us. We have a God who's created us and knows exactly what we need. Let's aim to please him and make good decisions that will draw us closer to him.